Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, let's take this time and give our youth the party. Yeah. 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 So what am I going to speak on? Um, but the topic God gave me was freedom from guilt. Um, a lot of people don't realize that guilt is a sin. Um, and I'm going to be coming from Romans 6.23. Guilt is a fact of life because sin is a... Guilt is a fact of life because sin is a fact of life. And our sin has the consequence of death. Romans 623. Mm -hmm. um, first, I'm going to talk about listening to our gift. The Bible says we are created in God's image and his glory. This wonderful privilege of bearing his image also holds out, holds out a requirement that we must live righteous. Mm -hmm. When we do something that conflicts with our sense of right and wrong, an alarming thing happens. We feel guilt. We feel guilty for it. If you are feeling guilty, then this eternal and moral compass is, sound, is a sounding alarm indicating that you may have sin. A sin and sin separates us from God. That's why it is important to listen to your guilt. Do not, do not just try to ignore those nagging feelings. Um, Listen to your heart. Then determine, then determine to find out what's causing your guilt and consequence. Guilty as charged. Even as you read these words, even as I'm reading these words, I may um, come to realize that I'm guilty for something, but I can't let the guilt overwhelm me. I have to go to Christ and act, repent and ask God to forgive me for those sins that I may have done. Um, true guilt is God's way of warning us to repent and turn away from our sins. He can forgive us, cleanse us, and make us entirely guilt-free. The Bible says all that have sinned fall sh all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's Romans three twenty-three. Guilt is a fact of life because sin is a fact of life. Um, again, Romans 6, 23 says, our sin has the consequence of death. That's just it. If we sin, we know. We're just going to, the consequence from it is death. God, God gives us answers to help with guilt. John 6, 44 and 45. God works everything that happens in our lives, including guilt, to draw us to Jesus. No matter what you have done, God has always made a way, made a way for us through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus lived, lived a perfectly sinless life, yet he was willing to die on the cross and receive the punishment we deserve. His death on the cross and triumph resurrection secures for all, secures for you all the blessings of God, including forgiveness. All you have to do is repent and turn your life over to God. Acts 3.19. Once you turn your life over to God, the Bible says this is called born again. A guilt-free living. God answers for sin and guilt accomplishment. And God answers for sin and guilt accomplishes what no amount of human effort could could imagine. Thanks to the blood of Jesus Christ, we can draw near. Guilt can arise from things we say and do directly. Um, 
that violate God's law. Even if we are not familiar with specific um, Bible passages, God has, God has given us a law written on our hearts that helps us know when we have seen Romans 2.15. Um, as you begin to pray about gift, guilt, God wants you to free, be free from any and everything that will hinder you from a full life and liberty in Him. If, if you are dealing with guilt, choose the path that leads to life, repentance. Then stay on the path to fully accepting God's forgiveness. Father, I confess my sins to you. Thank you for, for forgiving me of every sin. This is something you may say when you want to ask God for forgiveness and to come into your life. Um, a few scriptures that you may want to look over. Um, Romans 6.23, Timothy 4.22, John 1.9, 1, 1, Jeremiah 31.34. you never had. <clears throat> Amen. And now you all big and bad, you can buy anything now. Amen. This is how he act. this is how he act, amen. I can buy anything. Amen. Excuse me, amen, but I can That's even right. buy the women that I want now. Amen. amen. But <clears throat> tell us, amen, that in this story, man, after he done blew it all. Amen. When he had it all, he had the friends. Amen. When the money was gone, the friends were gone. Yes. Amen. And when the friends were gone, he had to come to uh, uh, find out, wait a minute, I got to go somewhere to find something to eat. <clears throat> Tell us, amen, that it, he even stooped so low, amen, that he was eating with the swine. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Supposed to have been feeding them, mm -hmm. but began to eat with the swine. Mm -hmm. But while he was eating, amen. Guilt began to set in. Yes. And he came to himself. Yes, that's good. That's good. Wait a minute. That's good. That's good. Back at home. Yes, come on. Amen. My father got bread. Yes. Amen. Back at home. Yes. Amen. Whatever I need, I know my father will give. Yes. Amen. Tell us, amen, that he began to say, amen, well, I'm going to go to my father. Uh -huh. See, sometimes when guilt set in, sometimes yes. we don't have enough sense to go to to the certain 
person that we need to go to to get that help because we got so much pride. Yes. Amen. But if we look, amen, the Bible tells us pride is a sin. Yes. Amen. God can't use you when you're prideful. Amen. Because when you pride, you all go for can't nobody tell you nothing. Uh -huh. Can't nobody show you the right way. Amen. Because you got it all up in here. Amen. But God said we got to humble ourselves down as a little child. Amen. Because see, some of us adults, amen, we, we too grown. We can't humble down. Amen. We some of us even have that dance to say, a child can't tell me nothing. Okay. Amen, but the Bible says, out of the mouth of babes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So if he if he's going to use the babies to teach us something, amen, why are we going to say a child can't tell me nothing? Right. 